it finally happened. War Thunder has released the newest tier of their aircraft, and I have to say, this completely changes how I see War Thunder. This is no longer a World War II aircraft simulator. I mean, frankly, it hasn't been for a long time, but now, stepping into the modern era with F-16s and MiG-29s, it's a whole new animal. Now, if you didn't already know, War Thunder is a completely free game. You can get it by clicking the link below, and it is available on almost every single gaming platform. PC, Xbox Series S, X, Xbox One, PS4, PS5, it's basically on everything. So, if you've never played this before, chances are you could probably play it for free right now. This is probably the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, with over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, ships, in dynamic combined arms PvP. Every vehicle is incredibly detailed and modeled down to their individual components. And today, I'm going to show you all of the different ways that you can play War Thunder with the latest aircraft. So, first off, we're gonna be doing a realistic battle with the F-16. And frankly, this is my favorite thing about War Thunder, the fact that you can play no matter your skill level. If you wanna play it like a full-blown aircraft simulator, you can. If you wanna play it like an arcade game, you can. And most importantly, if you wanna play it like something in the middle, which is realistic battles, you can do that as well. Now, before I blast a couple of these MiGs out of the sky, if you guys want to, you can click the link down below and you can get a whole bunch of exclusive rewards. This includes a bonus pack for new War Thunder players. And if you guys have never played this game before, I gotta tell you, having those extra resources when creating a new count is absolutely a must. All right, we just dropped our fuel tank. Uh, I love bringing that along because it gives me at least a little bit longer in Afterburner, which is uh, for an F-16, pretty important because the main thing about this aircraft that is really gonna give it an advantage over the competition is its maneuverability and speed. Like this thing is fast and it can climb. All right, so here we are at a nice comfortable 7,000 meters up in the sky and we have two radar guided missiles and four infrared guided missiles which are basically heat seekers now we can actually use our radar systems to find and lock targets for our ir missiles actually does help a little bit and maybe at some point in the future i'll do a video talking about the radar systems for anybody that is able to get up to this rank and acquire these F-16s and some of these other planes, uh, which by the way, I wanna talk about that in a couple of my other videos. I know you guys have complained about how hard it can be to sometimes unlock some of these aircraft. I totally get that, I feel you. So I'm actually gonna show you later, hold up, let's see if I can off this guy. I am gonna show you hopefully an easier way to get lions uh, and get research points so you can maybe unlock these faster. Because if you play this game right, it actually doesn't take as long to unlock these vehicles as it would otherwise. Uh, I mean, this is, this is high tier, so it does take time, don't get me wrong, but you can really cut down on that time if you play smart. All right, our team is doing pretty good. I am going to try and not get myself into a furball here. We've got an enemy Harrier and a MiG-23. Let's see if I can lock this guy up. Missile away. Oh, I lost that lock though. Oh, doesn't matter, hit him anyways. Now the cool thing is uh, there's a couple of different strategies. Oh, this is looking bad that you can utilize in this game. And because this game is so incredibly realistic, the strategies that you can use are actually some of the same strategies that real life uh, combat pilots use. All right, did a quick top up, landing at base, refueling, 
rearming. We're gonna go ahead and take off, and we're gonna go see if we can't hunt down whatever remaining targets are on the battlefield. The cool thing about the F-16 is this is the ultimate multi-role fighter, in my opinion, that currently exists in the War Thunder aircraft collection. This is such a wonderful addition to the game. There are two different types of the F-16, and I am flying the F-16 that is primarily more of an air-to-air -air variant, but you can get a different variant that can load up all sorts of ground attack capabilities. It is wonderful. And what we're going to do today is, even though I don't have any of those GBUs or anything loaded, the cool thing is War Thunder has every detail of the aircraft completely modeled. And one of the coolest things that I like about War Thunder is the aircraft have fully detailed interior cockpits that are also fully functional. And you're probably going to see a little bit more of this in the simulator game mode that I'm going to play later. I'm going to show off, but you can even switch your sight systems in order to utilize calculated impact points for things like your cannon. Uh, so I'm actually going to turn my air brake on and we're going to see if I can't enable this. And I'm going to go ahead and utilize my calculated impact point system in order. There it is. You see that circle? Put the crosshair right there. Goodbye, Mr. Tank. Boom, three targets down. Successful ground run, sick. And that's the cool thing about this game is you can actually utilize some of these realistic systems in these modern fighters in order to kill targets, uh, which is pretty awesome. Look at me with afterburner on with my air brake. I am a goofball. All right, but anyways, to prove my point, I wanna kinda show off some really cool stuff that you can do in this game if you understand some of the basic mechanics that are also utilized in real-life air combat, or in this instance, uh, real-life air-to-ground combat. So, this is a really cool map. This is a map that is, is so much fun to pull off some of these strategies, especially in high-tier gameplay. Uh, I've got my F-14 here, which I know this isn't the same battle rating as like some of the newer planes that just came out, but I still think that the F-14 is like one of the best aircraft that you can get. In fact, if you guys want to unlock anything, the first thing I think you should gun for is the F-14. It is still amazing. Uh, the second thing would be the uh, close air support variant of the F-16, which is also amazing. I would still say, however, that for the just multi-role utilitarian aspect of aircraft, the F-14 is the biggest bang for your buck. Like, I really think that in the current version of War Thunder, the F-14 is the best plane that you can unlock. The only other thing that I kind of like as much as this, and this is going to sound kind of strange, but I really like the Tornado, if you happen to just be able to reach high tier for Britain. Uh, but the, the, the Tornado is fantastic. But the F-14, the F-14 is where it's at. And let me tell you why. You see those four things on the bottom of the plane? Well, those four things on the bottom of the plane are 2,000-pound bombs. Uh, because the F-14 can carry a wide variety of armaments. Some of the cooler ones are the Phoenix missiles, which you can utilize to shoot down target. It's like, it's a super hyper long range missile that also has its own onboard radar. Uh, so you can technically fire it, guide it in, and then fire and forget it and let it just kill. I, I don't know. The Phoenix is awesome if you know how to use it. It also has your standard, you know, IR radar locked missiles, but the cool thing is the F-14 can also carry four 2,000-pound bombs. And this is huge because that is all you need to knock out an entire enemy base in War Thunder in either realistic battles or whatever. And knocking out enemy bases, I mean, not only does it help you win the match, but it gets you a lot of lions. Um, it, it could get you a lot. Uh, maybe not as much as if you were to, like, you know, obviously kill the entire team. But you can get a lot of points knocking out these bases. And the F-14 just happens to have enough 
ground-to-air capability to destroy an entire base. Now, that's just the first part of this very cool thing. Because the other thing that the F-14 can do, other than just being insanely fast, uh, not as fast as the F-16, but still insanely fast. I mean, the F-14 is very fast. Uh, and not only is it fast, but it has a lot of fuel. Um, in fact, I would say that's the only thing that is probably better about the F-14 than the F-16, is in full afterburner, you can probably go longer um, in the F-14 than you can in the F-16, even if the F-16 has, like, an additional uh, fuel tank. Um, but anyways, I'm getting off topic. The other cool thing that the F-14 has is something called calculated release point functionality. Now, if you've been watching this video for 10 minutes, you'll have seen in the previous engagement with my F-16, I had the calculated impact point system being utilized to engage ground targets with my cannon. Well, if you are a freaking nerd, you can also take advantage of a similar feature called calculated release point. A little bit more complicated to use, but it's still amazing. And basically what you can do is you can use either a preset GPS coordinates or you can use a laser designator or a targeting pod to designate a target. Uh, for these matches, we can actually use GPS coordinates that are available at the beginning of the match, and you can use these coordinates to drop bombs on a target without even looking at it. Um, now, this allows you to do super cool sneak attack maneuvers, or do maneuvers where you can launch bombs from an insanely high altitude or very, very far away. Uh oh, I just ran into an enemy convoy. Oh! Hey, hey. Now, as you just saw, in order to evade radar, I utilized that canyon back there, and we just straight up Top Gun Mavericked our way all the way to this enemy base, this enemy base target right here, and we're gonna we're gonna lock this bad boy up. Hold up, let me make sure I have this locked. All right, we have this locked, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down the drop bomb button. Um, and you can even see that you can utilize this system in the cockpit as well. As you can see, it says bomb release permission, so I am now holding down the bomb release button, and the computer is gonna decide when to release the bombs. So here we go. Bombs away. The computer released those bombs. That wasn't me, but watch this. They are going to be on target. Boom. Gone. And that is what is so cool about the F-14, because you can launch these highly precision strikes at, like, Mach 1, full speed, don't even need to look, drop bombs, it will hit the target, like, threading a needle, and then you can just full afterburn your way out of there, and nobody's gonna see you. It's, it's awesome. It is the coolest thing about the F-14. Uh, and here's another little tip. Now, I, I might be kind of a coward for doing this, um, but just a quick little tip. I know some of you have also complained about the repair cost, because as you know, in this game, when you play, you've got lions, you've got eagles, which is like the premium currency, you've got research points that you can use to unlock new planes. Um, and the cool thing about War Thunder, well, I guess depending on who you are, either, either it's cool or it's not cool, every single time your aircraft is destroyed, you have to repair it. And this either takes time, uh, or you can utilize your lions, which are, you know, completely free currency that you earn by playing the game, but you can utilize your lions to repair it. Now, these jets, uh, every time you repair them, they cost quite a bit of lions. But here's the thing. If you're a coward like me, uh, the game doesn't actually require you to win the game in order to get your lions. Don't get me wrong, if you do win the game, you get a whole bunch more points. But if you don't if you don't want to risk your jet, doing these precision strikes with guided bombs like this, going under the radar, not being detected, and then retreating back to base and 
and leaving the mission <laughs> with your aircraft intact, it technically completely works. You still get your rewards and your plane isn't dead, uh, which is awesome. Now, if you're super confident in yourself, now let's see, I'm going to take a couple of shots at these guys here. I've got a couple of aircraft here that I'm going to lock and just kill on my way back to base. But if you're super confident in yourself, don't get me wrong, the F-14 is also a fantastic air-to-air uh, -air aircraft. But I really think that the F-14's air-to-ground capabilities are just insanely underappreciated. I think I maybe locked these guys up way too far. Yeah, very possibly. There goes my Phoenix. My Phoenix missile is... is <laughs> it's lost attention. I did not play my cards right there at all. Uh, but we're gonna go back. We're gonna land this bad boy, and we're gonna we're gonna walk out of here with <laughs> with all of our lions and all of our rewards from this mission without having lost our plane. So that's a quick tip. If you want to get research points, but you don't want to lose your plane and set yourself back. Doing these stealth strikes, taking out bases like this, and then and then just skedaddling your way out is it is the coward's way out, but it's it's the best way. <laughs> Alright, here we are. Back at base. Don't hit that tree. Got our air brake on. Gear out, flaps down. Look at me being a good little pilot. This is probably the nicest landing I've done in a while. Usually, I, I will come into a runway full afterburner and then just throw flaps out, air brake on, and then just hit the deck with my with my wheels and just turn on the... I've done it. I've done it. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead. We're going to stop the plane, and then we're just going to eject. And, uh, and we're going to leave... <laughs> Uh, well, not eject. I mean, when you do this, you can you can stop and obviously repair, re refit your plane. But there we go, successful mission. So there you go. You want to cheese? You want to cheese some points without getting your jet killed? That's how you do it. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, simulator battles. Now, simulator battles. If you guys don't know about this, simulator battles are probably the best way to unlock aircraft and get points and get lions and get everything you need in order to get all your way up to high tier. Um, now, the reason for this is because the rewards that you can get from doing simulator battles are very high. But it's also very risky. You have to be good and you have to know what you're doing because you can also lose a lot in simulator battles as well. And the reason for this is because if your plane gets destroyed, the repair costs are much more. And because the game mode is fundamentally different than your standard, like, realistic battles game mode, uh, you can die a lot. So, play simulator battles if you want to make a lot of lions, but make sure you practice ahead of time, because if you get killed, well, you'll lose a lot of resources. It's kind of like a gamble, uh, but it's a very, very high skill-based gamble, which I personally love. Now, I love flying the F-14 in simulator battles, primarily because this is one of the only game modes where you can do full-blown carrier operations. As you saw, I launched off the carrier, which is awesome, and because the Enduring Confrontation uh, simulation game mode lasts for hours. You can pop in, pop out, and you can do these really, really cool carrier operations, and then after you've taken out a bunch of targets, you can leave, or you can play through the entire match and rack up a lot of points. And the F-14, like I showed you before, it's got great ground attack capability. It's got great uh, anti-air and long-range capability. In fact, we're going to talk about that a little bit here. I'm going to talk about the track wall scan system, which is awesome, and I don't think there's a single other plane that has this. Uh, again, dude, the F-14 is so good. But today, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the capabilities of this aircraft and how it's so cool that it can do all of these different things. Now, I'm kind of hoping at some point that there might be a aircraft that's even better at air-to-ground than the F-14. 
I don't think I've found it yet, at least not for War Thunder. There is the A-10, and the A-10 can do some pretty cool things, but the A-10 is so slow... Hold up, we got a target here. ...that the A-10 usually gets shot out of the sky before I can get anywhere close uh, with its air-to-ground weapons. The F-14 is the only thing that can defend itself in the sky while also being able to strike targets. Uh, the F-16 would be a close second, but unfortunately... The F-16 can't carry the same amount of explosive material. Here we go, we're gonna smack this dude. Let's hope this only takes a single missile. Please. Boom. And for some reason, the Mavericks on the F-16, I'm just not as good at using those as I wish I could be. In fact, if anybody has any advice on that, please let me know, because I really need to get better at utilizing targeting pods and other things like that. Uh, but right now, the F-14, with the CCRP capability and its Phoenix missiles and all of the other armaments that it has, it's just the perfect multi-role vessel uh, for me. Now, the other cool thing that the F-14 has that is really useful for um, Simulator is it has the TWS mode, in addition to all of the other stuff. Hold up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take out some of these bombers. Boom. Utilize our IR missiles for this, because this should be pretty easy. Boom. Two bad boys down. Look at that. Mission objective complete. Destroy bombers at D4. Man, I love Simulator. I, this this is my this is my favorite game mode right here. This is what I like to play. If I could play this all day every day, this is this is what I would want War Thunder to be. Now we've got some ground targets over here, but it is really difficult to take out AA in simulator. In fact, again, if any ooh, hold up, somebody's locking me. If anybody has any tips on how to counter ground AA and sim, please let me know. All right, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch to TWS. And the cool thing about TWS and War Thunder is it has the ability to track multiple targets simultaneously, um, especially while you have them locked on and you're tracking them uh, for a missile. And, uh oh, hold up, somebody just shot something at me. I'm dumping the flares, going defensive. Let's dive, get in a thicker air. As you can see, it looks like we're actually winning this. At the top, you can see that we have significantly more victory points than they do. We're going to hit the deck, dump flares, get into this thick air. Oops, somebody's still trying to lock me. Oh, it looks like he's engaged by something else. Yeah, hold up. F, the other F-14 just took out a MiG-23, so that might have been him. I think we're clear. I see somebody else up there, though. And the TWS system also has a really useful uh, IFF system for identifying friendlies or enemies. And in Simulator, it is an absolute game changer. Like, seriously, TWS in realistic battles maybe isn't, like hugely important, but in Simulator, it gives you such a significant amount of situational awareness that it's just, it's disgusting. I think that, is that friendly? That's friendly. Okay. So we got a friendly F-16 there. So we're going to push around. See, look at this. This, I, I love this. I love the fact that War Thunder lets you do this. I love that it can be just like a little arcade game if you want, but if you want to go full-blown like sim you can and you don't even need that much in order to do it in fact if anybody wants to get into this i fly simulator in war thunder i do my entire thing uh with a gamepad controller just a standard xbox controller plugged into my my pc that's what i'm utilizing right now you don't need any track ir you don't need any crazy hotas uh it's it's like a really cool open simulator experience, but it's more casual, but you still get to have these these enduring confrontation missions where you can go out and work as a team and get research points to unlock stuff. It's it's honestly it's fantastic. Alright, I'm not really seeing 
anything. Nothing's really locking me. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I think we're going to land on this carrier. And... Oh, something's locking me. Could just be a friendly. We've, we've already taken out a good number of enemy aircraft. So we are now going to do a carrier landing. Put my gear down. Carrier landings are probably one of the more difficult things in War Thunder. I had to practice this a lot in private lobbies before I felt confident to do this in sim and during confrontation. But the fact that you can do this in War Thunder at all is awesome. Like, the fact that there is an entire, like, carrier operations gameplay loop is the sickest thing. And now that there's F-16s and MiG-29s, like, it's, oh, uh, yes, yes. All right, here we go. Catch. Boom. Done and done. Sick. All right, well, there you go. There's a full F-14 carrier operation mission. Super sick. If you guys like this content, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to get War Thunder for free, click the link down below. If you're a new player, you get a whole bunch of rewards. And if you got an Xbox or a PlayStation, it's available everywhere. All right, see you guys in the next one. Cheers.